Hi, this is TradingETFs.com. Today is January 28th, 2016, and this is an ETF update. And uh, I'm going to go over three different ETFs. Um, the first one here is the USO, which is the United States Oil ETF. And um, I'm also going to go over the um, IBB ETF. And then I'm also going to give um, a snapshot of Amazon stock. And I'm going to make a comparison uh, with the USO ETF and Amazon um, because I think you can see some similarities stacking up here um, on the short-term oscillators. So first of all, um, here is the USO ETF. And you can see here that in terms of price, uh, we've pretty much just been moving down steadily. Uh, every, every move up was followed by a lower low we go sideways another low low go sideways another lower low and here we are at a point where it's trying to um, put in some type of a short-term bottom here right at the 850 price range and what i what i want to show you is that look how overbought on the short-term oscillator um, or or look how overbought the oscillator is just after a little bit over a dollar and a quarter move from 850 up to 975 uh, the oscillator is at an extreme overbought level you can see here in the last um, three months the oscillator has never been this high so what that means is that that it's taken an awful lot of momentum just for the price to move a dollar and a quarter and at this point, um, we are severely overbought, and that's going to set up oil, in my opinion, to be able to turn to the downside and break the 850 lows that we have in place right now. I'm going to switch over to the long-term oscillator and kind of get a picture of what it looks like um, from a longer-term perspective. Uh, I can just get my chart right here. Sorry about that, just having some issues with my system here. So switching over to the long-term oscillator, you can see we, we did get um, in, in an oversold area. We're now moving up at that 975 level. But the oscillator and the price are pretty much just right in line with each other. There's really no, um, there's no um, difference between the two. There's really nothing to gain from this. The price is pretty much trying to pull the oscillator up. But again, when you look at it from a standpoint of the short-term oscillator, just look how overbought we've become. And that doesn't bode well for the oil price to continue to rise. Uh, it, it does suggest that we're going to turn. And there's plenty of room now for the oscillator to get back into the oversold area. There's plenty of room for price to just completely turn to the downside and break this 850 price level. Um, so that's what it looks like it's setting up to do. And the reason I wanted to do a comparison with Amazon is, is not that there's any correlation with oil and Amazon, but there is um, something that we can gain from looking at a chart of Amazon from a short-term oscillator perspective. So here's the chart here of Amazon and what I wanted to to show this comparison for is that this was as the as of the close as of today and you can see that the oscillator which is here in yellow has come up to the extreme overbought level and prices is, is is following it up um, and so we had a pretty big move in Amazon today and they're reporting earnings, or they reported earnings, right after the market closed. And so here we have the short-term oscillator closing at an extreme overbought level. And Amazon came out and missed their earnings report. And as of the close 
um, of after hour trading. Amazon stock is uh, right at the $550 level. Um, I just want to confirm that real quick. So you can see, yeah, we are it closed at 550. So after hours, the stock is trading at 550 down here. So all that occurred was speculators came in today and they were bidding up Amazon stock simply on the back of Facebook, thinking that Facebook blew away earnings report. So Amazon's going to come and do the same thing. And they bid up the stock and all the way up to $635 and the market closed. They come out report earnings and now the stock is just absolutely hammered down to 550. And my point is, is that on the short term oscillator, it got extreme overbought. And so when it gets this extreme overbought, then the upside is, is pretty much used uh, in terms of momentum. So in other words, price went up to such an extreme amount that it overpriced in any type of, of earnings miss. And here we're seeing the ramifications of doing that down at 550, which is probably where it's going to open tomorrow morning. And again, when I go back to the USO chart, and we can see the same same scenario shaping up here. Short-term oscillator is at an extreme overbought level, and it took price from 850 to 975. So now the upside momentum is, um, I mean, there's a lot less upside momentum that can occur at this point. And so what you set yourself up for is any other type of bad news that comes out in the oil market is going to take price and the oscillator back to the downside. But because the oscillator is so extremely overbought, there's plenty of room for it to move to the downside. So again, it suggests to me that we're going to not only get to the 850 level, but we're going to break those lows and go even, go even lower. And so I just wanted to show you a, an example of what happens when the oscillator, short-term oscillator, gets to such an over, it, overbought extreme that any other bad news that comes in, you're setting the market up or that ETF up for a big move to the downside. So that looks exactly like we're going, looks like what we're going, going to get over the next couple days. I'm not sure what the um, event would be, what the trigger would be, but that's what I would look for um, over the next couple days to the next week or so. And the, the last ETF I wanted to, to look in on is the IBB which is the biotech ETF. And the reason I want to bring this one up is I want to go back to the long-term oscillator. And if you look back on a video I did on January 6th, I had talked about the IBB um, ETF. And at that time, what we saw was it had spent a lot of time, the, the long-term oscillator had spent a lot of time in the positive area and got to the overbought area twice and yet it had very little effect on moving the stock price or the ETF price and it was in a trading range here and on this day here is when I did the video and I had said that it looked like it had turned over and now momentum is gaining to the downside and my expectation was that we were going to break down below the zero line and this was the day when I did the, the video the ETF closed here and I had said, if we break through the zero line, which I thought we were going to, then we were going to put this the, the lows in the one oh in the excuse me the 305 area price range. And certainly, or, or sure enough, it did break down through the zero line. And not only did we get to that 305 level, but we're all already down into the 263 level. And the oscillator still has not bottomed out. So. I just wanted to show that an update from January 6th is that I was calling for the IBB to not only break down below the zero line, but also um, start um, just completely collapsing, and it, it, it certainly has. And it doesn't look like we're at the end yet 
Um, but let's take a look at the short-term oscillator and um, see what that's showing us. So on a short-term oscillator, um, you can see here we've got a couple days in bounce in the long in the oscillator. Um, all it did was alleviate the oversold reading, and now we're coming down and we've got plenty of room to move down some more. So it doesn't appear like this is the bottom that I'm seeing either um, in the IBB. Um, if I stretched out the chart a little bit longer, we'd be able to see what the next level would be that we'd go to. Um, And you, you got to remember that IBB is is one of the ETFs that um, everyone like to jump into for momentum, and you can see it's completely just collapsing. Um, and I go back if I go back 190 days, tra 190 trading days, it's not even showing where the next level of support is. So we're going to have to go back even farther and take a look to see where the next level of support would be. And, um, you know, even, even if I go back 290 trading days, it's still not showing me any support. So it looks like um, we, we are going to be on the verge of the markets collapsing even more based on what I can see. So here we are in terms of price down at the 263 level. And you can see we go back to the 2014 time frame before we get to support. And we're, you know, kind of approaching uh, support maybe in the 255 range. Um, but at this point, with the momentum increasing to the downside, we can certainly get down into the 230 range based on how quick this market can, can fall apart. Um, and so I just wanted to give another update from January 6th. You can take a look at that video on my YouTube channel and, um, and see what I've been saying at the time. And it's definitely um, working out to the way that I saw things shaping up. And um, so that's about it for right now. And um, I'll continue to update as soon as I see more that, um, that I can comment on. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.